I'm Dr. Brad Hafford, archaeologist and economic anthropologist. Welcome to Note Note, where I take a close look at a banknote from the relatively recent past. As an anthropologist, I'm more interested in what money does than what it's worth. And one of the things it does is carry messages about the culture using it, or what the authority that issued it wants to emphasize. So it could be called a kind of propaganda. Today, we look at a one Ethiopian dollar note issued by the State Bank of Ethiopia around 1949. We begin by looking at the obverse, or the front of the note. This side typically emphasizes the issuing authority and often carries the image of an important person of the country. In this case, we have the profile of Emperor Haile Selassie, also known as Ras Tafari Makonnen. He had many grandiose titles, including Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Elect of God. These stem from the tradition that the Ethiopian monarchs traced their line back to Menelik I, who was the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Despite the titles indicating a near-divine status, Selassie introduced the first constitution of the country. It provided some possibility for more democratic rule, but it still kept the power firmly in the hands of the nobility. Juxtaposed with the regal portrait, the central image is that of a farmer, the heart and soul of the country. The man plows the field with the help of two oxen, and his village is seen in the background. Farther back still, we see mountains and rolling clouds. The clouds look almost threatening, boiling up as they do, but from them pours rain, the lifeblood of the agricultural fields. And it can be no accident that the stoic image of the emperor is placed as if watching out over this scene, almost certainly meant to portray him as a kind of fatherly, protective figure, despite the fact that his record on helping the rural inhabitants wasn't all that good. Farmers, everyday people, were the backbone of the country, and one of the emperor's biggest goals was to establish a currency that they would faithfully use. Before 1945, many different currencies circulated in the country, and the common people preferred the Austrian-designed Maria Theresa Thaler a silver coin that seemed more real than most other currencies. The note carries script in both Amharic, which is the Ethiopian language, in the upper portion, and English in the lower portion, allowing for an easier use by visitors who were unfamiliar with the Ethiopian script. Selassie had many connections to Western nations and was attempting to modernize Ethiopia after it was liberated from the Italian annexation only a decade earlier. In all four corners, there is the number one, designating the value of the note. In the upper corners, this number is in Amharic, and it includes the additional two syllables B and Ir, as the name of the currency in Amharic is beer. In the background are fine lines that undulate in an orange hue, conjuring the radiance of the sun, while beneath the central scene are fine lines in a dark green that might well indicate the richness of the earth. Surrounding the note is a web of fine lines, somewhat similar to the webbing on the U.S. dollar, and millions of Ethiopian dollars were printed in the U.S. by the Security Banknote Company. In fact, the United States helped Ethiopia to create this new currency through a loan of 5.4 million ounces of silver, despite British interests attempting to force a currency based on the pound sterling. The Security Banknote Company left its mark beneath the state bank, and the governor or general manager of the bank, who was an American, signed the note. In this case, it was the second governor of the bank, Jack Bennett, who held the position from 1949 to 1953. The bank's signature and the image of the emperor helped guarantee the functional security of the note, but more was needed to protect it from counterfeit. The intricate engravings, as well as the serial number in red overstamp, are part of the security measures, as they make the note difficult to copy. But that's not really enough, and so many notes carry a watermark in the paper itself visible only when backlit. This note does not have that feature, but it does have security dots. This is a technique where random dots of color appear on the note. At first, they look like water damage, but they are intentional. Two blue dots are seen in the center of the note, and one red is up in the upper edge. So now, let's examine the reverse. The reverse of a note typically emphasizes the laws that authorize or protect it. In this case, however, we see very little text, solely the Amharic for one Ethiopian beer. 
In fact, the legal underpinnings of the currency had not been completely established when the plates were made. Britain wanted the East African shilling, a currency based on the pound sterling and used in several British African colonies, to be the currency for Ethiopia. And so, the emperor essentially established the state bank without the British knowing. Or rather, he told them that the bank would not have the authority to issue or control currency, would only be a savings bank. Meanwhile, he asked the U.S. for loans to make a national currency. By the time Britain found out, the loan was issued, the bank was operating, and they couldn't really stop it. The only image on the reverse, quite prominent in fact, is in the central oval. It is a crowned lion bearing a bannered staff with a cross at its upper end. Known as the Lion of Judah, this is a kind of coat of arms that has been in use since the 17th century at least. And it was on the national flag of Ethiopia from 1941 to 1974. It represents the conjunction of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, the people of Ethiopia, and the nation itself, with the crown representing the emperor. We also have intricate web-like designs, covering the background in most places here on the reverse. In some areas, however, the design is formed of English words repeating in arcs, State Bank of Ethiopia. The color is entirely green on the reverse, and it appears that there was a bit of money-saving concern in printing the note. It is impressive overall, but without a watermark and with limited colors, it would be easier to print than many of the more elaborate currencies circulating in the world, even at the time. So what does this note tell us about Ethiopia in 1949, and how does that compare to what we know from history? The Italian army, under orders from Benito Mussolini, invaded Ethiopia in 1935 and declared Abyssinia, the Ethiopian Empire, a province of Italy in 1936. Haile Selassie went into exile and addressed the League of Nations for help. It did little to censure Italian interests, but with the outbreak of the Second World War, things began to change. Britain, mainly using South African colonial troops, liberated Ethiopia from the Italians in 1941. And Haile Selassie returned five years after his exile to begin anew. The Italians had, of course, brought in the Italian lira as the primary currency, but the people of Ethiopia didn't trust it or they didn't like to use it. So the Italians had to strike additional Maria Theresa dollars, a heavy silver coin, buying the dyes from the Austrians. When Selassie returned, there were many different currencies in use, including some Italian lira, Egyptian pounds, Indian rupees, East African shillings, and, of course, the Maria Theresa dollars. He faced an uphill battle of consolidating currencies or creating one that would be acceptable and used by all. He entered into many negotiations with the British, but cleverly sidestepped them on many of their demands. The plan had initially been formulated in 1942 for a national currency. The British put this plan down, but the Emperor continued to work on it in secret. In 1945, the currency was finally issued and called the dollar, in translation, but the beer in Amharic. And to the British surprise, this new dollar was well accepted and eventually managed to supplant the other currencies in the country. Selassie did a lot to modernize Ethiopia. He was an anti-fascist icon and supporter of the League of Nations, despite its lack of assistance to him. He believed in the idea of mutual protection, and Ethiopia then became a charter member of the United Nations when it came into being in 1945. Though he was a supporter of many Western ideas, he actively pursued decolonization of Africa. He also supported the Orthodox Church, establishing the independence of Ethiopian bishops, though they remained a part of the Alexandrian Church. In fact, as indicated by the cross emblem at the end of the lion's staff on the back of the note, Ethiopia has a large Christian population. Over 60% reported their religion to be Christianity in a 2007 poll. But there were human rights problems under Selassie's reign as well. His constitution favored the nobility and the indisputable power of the monarch. This meant that commoners had little or no say in their government. Plus, there are many Muslims in the country. And in 1948, the government used violence to put down a peaceful Muslim protest. The note doesn't show any of this. And it wouldn't, since its job is to unite the people, not divide them. It attempts to show the emperor as overseeing his people's welfare and maintaining the strength and dignity of the nation. And it does give that impression. Whether it was true or not depends on your perspective. 
I hope you enjoyed looking at this banknote with me. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Note Nook, part of my series, Money Talks.